Okay, so your goal is weight loss and strength training or strengthening. You said you sit by the desk eight hours. The challenges you are facing are consistency and willpower. So you know what? The simplest question I can ask you is, tell me, tell me how long have you been facing this challenge with consistency, willpower? And then the second question is, why do you think you're facing this challenge with consistency, willpower? So tell me a little bit about that story first. Sure. So um, the last, oh gosh, the last 10 years have been particularly difficult. So I've been uh, doing IVF and Mm -hmm. um, I've been on a lot of medication. Mm -hmm. Um, All of the IVFs have failed, which Mm -hmm. has led to a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. Um, And after each failed cycle, there's definitely like a period where I just like, I don't care. Okay. um, I have that moment of those, those, those months of like, all right, this doesn't matter, you know, and I'm just depressed and, um, I'll get myself kind of ramped up and I'll be like, all right, I'm going to get back on this. I'm going to feel good about myself or, um, you know, life's too short. I need to do this, but then I'll feel like, you know, something knocked me down again. Um, I'm done with IVF. Um, and right now I think I just, I, it's hard for me to get in that mindset of, um, like how I want my life to be. I think I want to get into another phase where those 10 years of, you know, uh, the, those 10 years of just sort of like pain and, and all of that has, is kind of over. And I have a new kind of phase of my life where I'm focusing on myself. I just turned 40. Um, and you know, just, I, I have a hard time. I've had a hard time with that. Just, I think a lot of it's just depression and, um, yeah. Okay. So these are very powerful, um, powerful words you share with me. And I really appreciate your strength, your courage and strength. with me. It's not easy. Uh, take it from me. I do this for a living every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got an important question. Okay. Mm-hmm. I need you to be, I need you to be straightforward with sure. me, right? The, the question is, you said the last 10 years you've gone through the pain with the IVF and other things. And you said a couple of things that, that once again dawned on me. And, and these are why, this is why these strategy sessions are so important. You said something happens and then you give up or you're like taking care of you is not important. Yeah. So give me a couple of examples of like what that something happens where it just diminishes your aspiration to become a better version of you and you're like screw it um most of the time it's a miscarriage okay um or a failed IVF or um or just something it's mostly over the last 10 years it's been that um or something personally that's just like you, you are trying really hard to to, uh, I guess, achieve. And then you get to the point where it, it, it doesn't work out. And then you are just like, screw it. This doesn't matter. Yeah, or yeah. you, or you get into this weird cycle where you say, all right, I'm just going to, I'll start over tomorrow. And then you say that every day, um, or I'll start over next week. And you never do, uh, it never works out. And then you get it just, that's how my, my brain will will keep working. And then you find out like it's months later and you've gained weight or you, you know, it hurts to walk or, you know, or you're just, or you're miserable. Um, and I think that's kind of how I've been in this weird cycle. Okay. So here's the question. You've been going through this weird cycle. And once again, it takes a lot of courage to talk about your own mindset challenges, right? So the question is, if you've seen a pattern in your, in your psychology that, you get motivated to take care of you. Yeah. And then something happens where it triggers like, pardon my French, no. fuck it. Yeah, I yeah. I'm looking good or feeling good. I don't care about my body. Why, why do, what am I working out for? There's no goal. Yeah. Then you go back on it to get this, this surge of motivation. And like, I'm going to empower myself. I'm going to build myself up. I'm going to feel yeah. confident. I'm going to walk down the street in my favorite jeans. And then something happens again. You're like, screw the jeans. <laughs> yeah. Screw the confidence, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But my question is, is, why change now? Like, why change? Why invest in coaching with us or, or with anyone else if 
same shit's going to happen again. Tomorrow, something's going to happen again. Yeah. I think why I'm one, there's one just like big thing that I just turned 40 (laughs) and um, my mom is chronically ill. She has fibromyalgia and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And she started getting very sick when she was around 40. Um, And she's on disability and she can hardly get around her house. And she's very, very overweight. Mm -hmm. And I am terrified of turning out like that. Um, So I'm using this opportunity where I, I was really unhappy at my job. Um, I am leaving that job and I'm kind of using this, I don't know, this milestone in my life. Um, there's been some things with my mom that have kind of triggered me to be like, you can't, you just can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I I, I'm so terrified of, I just can't turn out that way. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I'm just. Yeah, it was just kind of a, a revelation moment. At okay, but so listen, listen. The question still stands. Yeah. You have this new surge of motivation because of what's yeah. going on with your mom and you turning 40 and all that, uh-huh. all that stuff is great. Yeah. question still stands for yeah. me as a coach is mm-hmm. what, makes me sh- what makes you so sure that if tomorrow something will happen and your, your drive will not be submerged and you will not give up again? What makes you so sure that this is the final... <laughs> this is what you needed I know I know I mean I don't I mean I what makes me so sure I mean those that those those things I, I I'm I can't being being 40 doing all this, all this I that's what makes me sure I can't I don't know I have I have people that I, in my life that I I can't let down so um I have no other excuse now, right now that I'm not working and I can focus on it. So that's, that's what makes me sure. I, I, I don't know if I can give you a better answer than that, but um, I oh, have that's, a lot of that's, that, that, that's, that's the answer you have now. Yeah. That's the answer you know now. So that's yeah. the best answer you can give to me. But yeah. I, I bet, I bet maybe we can get a better answer out of you. Okay. 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 Uh, how soon are you prepared, uh, prepared to start and overcome the challenge? April 1st. Um, you have a metal rod in my back. That we'll discuss when we do the physical assessment on a mm-hmm. scale of one to ten. How would you rate yourself on being able to handle multiple projects? Eight. So you're a good multitasker. It just yeah. feels like you're not a. You, this hasn't been a priority. It's not like yeah. you can't multitask working out. Oh yeah, no, that's not. That's not it. I guess it's just like it hasn't been a priority. Um, oh. And I like, usually it's weird. My, I don't know what it is about my psychology. Sometimes I'm really good at sticking to something, but then when I I'll have a moment where like, I'll be like, Oh no, I, I want to go out to eat with my husband and I'll have like one like cheat day or something. And yeah. that's the thing that causes everything to go downhill. So there's like, something, there's something in your psychology that we have to clarify yeah. why you are. Um, yeah. Why, why do you like, start something and quit something or why do you like stick something really good but then all of a sudden there is that one small trigger that you might not expect and all of a sudden boom. yeah it'll just knock me I'm like so I can be so stubbornly I'm so stubbornly good at something I'll just stick to it so strictly yeah. and my husband will make fun of me about it. I'm like no no I have to stick yeah. to it and it'll be the one little thing and it'll be like all right well I didn't stick to it so I might as well just come give up <laughs> so I need to uh, like figure out why the hell I do that yeah yeah well, well you know it, it might take more than one session to figure that out <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely do my best to figure that out we'll, we'll go without that um you've been struggling with yourself whole, whole adult life yeah yeah I mean I I've been overweight in some to some degree for my whole adult life um you know I come from a very unhealthy family <laughs> I'm probably the thinnest person in my family they're all I was raised um down south um, and just not, it was not a priority to exercise or eat well or anything. Oh, I know, I know what it's like in the South. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I that it. I've struggled and I've kind of yo-yoed. I've, you know, okay. like four years ago, I lost like 40 pounds and I gained some of it back and, but yeah, I've struggled with it. It's just more so the last few years. Okay. So, um, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to keep moving forward and, and the thing because now my brain is really turning wheels with all this organization you're telling me. Okay. 
I get close to my goal and I stop for some reason. We haven't figured that out yet. I have a few months between jobs. Okay, I have, I have to be healthy before we have a child. Okay, how committed are you? 10 out of 10. So here's the thing. You said you're committed 10 out of 10. I am. So that's a huge thing. Yeah, yep. that was another thing I put. On, I forgot I put on there. We're waiting for, we're getting, uh, we have a, we're waiting for a surrogate. Um, mm -hmm. So that probably will take another year or so. It's, obviously it takes a while. We're waiting to get matched and I want okay. to, I want to feel good before that. Happens. Yeah, you want to be your best. It's a huge responsibility. It's going to take yeah. a lot of physical strength and energy from you. Yeah. Especially like, if, you know, I'm not as young as I was when I started this. So <laughs> what, if, you know? what if I, what if I can make you even younger? I would love to feel that way. I guess. Okay. But listen, we still have to figure out the mindset question first. Yeah. So here's the thing. You said you're a 10 out of 10 on commitment. Yeah. I feel okay. like I am. So a 10 is here as a, a one is here. A one is, I have no desire to improve myself. Mm -hmm. A five is like, if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, whatever, I don't care. A seven is like, I'm going to do it, but let me just get, we'll take care of this one thing at work first. Uh -huh. And a 10 is like, why are we talking? Why aren't we just doing push-ups right now? <laughs> what, why do we have to wait till April 1st? Yeah, yeah. Why, yeah. Why, I mean, why, that's why, true. Why, I mean, are you, why are you talking to me, coach? Why yeah, aren't you so activating my glutes and the core? And fixing my like like by now I could have done forty pushups. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I could start earlier. It's just my job is still happening. I could start earlier. Okay, so you could start earlier. Yeah, right? I could. Yeah, okay. I was I was timing it with my job ending, but you're right. Yeah, I could start earlier. Here's an answer that a ten out of a ten gives you. A ten yeah. out of a ten gives you this answer. My job starts, and I still have to work. Mm -hmm. but is anyone stopping me from doing a ten minute workout now? No. Can I right. squeeze in 10 minutes a day? No. Yeah, right. Okay. Can I squeeze in five minutes a day? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So that's a 10 out of 10. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Someone I can totally says, do that. Someone who says, I'm going to do this consultation right now while I do push-ups. <laughs> that's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> okay. So you understand that you might not really be a 10 out of 10 because I just gave you an example of a 10 out of 10. Does that, is that fair? That makes sense. sense. That makes sense then. Yeah. Okay, next, um, let's go back to your thing. Uh, what reasons do you, eating and consistency and exercise. Okay, we can talk about nutrition. What reasons are, reasons do you see you would, again, put this on the back burner, only if there is a health setback. Okay, so are you going through health issues? No, I mean, so I have, I have endometriosis. Um, I have, I've been in, I've been under control for a long time, but, um, and it's been a while since I've had to have surgery or anything, but that's the only thing I could possibly foresee, but it's been a long time and it's been under control. Awesome. Okay. I like yep. that. So listen, lucky, luckily for you, I'm extremely passionate about what I do and I have a great team and we've been doing this for a long, long time. I'm probably going to do this till my 95th birthday, if not my <laughs> So I'm going to give you a birthday gift. I'm going to get you in sick shape in eight weeks. Okay. But only if you do, as I say, and you're committed to yourself as well. Okay. The way coaching works is I bring on the knowledge, the guidance, the mindset and problem solving skills. And I'm already passionate about coaching people. So I'm not the one that lacks passion. But what I can do for you is turn your brain on in a way where you view exercise so differently, where you're like, God, I'm kind of passionate about working out. This affects every area of my life. This is, uh -huh. a, I never thought of it that way. That's probably one of the best things I can do for you. Okay. Are you up for that? Yep, I am. Eight weeks. Okay. Okay. So let's go on to um, another exercise. Okay. Okay. Let's say today something happens again. Something goes on, you get a text message from work, you get an email, something happens in your personal life. You're pumped right now in this strategy session. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow you wake up and you're like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm not, it's all right. You know what? There'll be next year. Uh -huh. But you never actually take that step and 
strike the iron while it's hot. And now your momentum comes deeper. And with age, as we get older, our drive and ambition to work on ourselves diminishes. Mm -hmm. A known fact. And all of a sudden, 22, Christmas comes around, 2023, summer comes around, and 2023, winter comes around. Now you're 41 turning 42. Yeah. And you look back one day, you know, just mindless social media, mindless television. You're like just thinking to yourself, like, wow, I wish I would have taken that opportunity in 2022, March, to get this in order or at least try the course for eight weeks. Uh and figured out on how to handle this part of my life because now even I'm even that much less driven and motivated and strong because my ambition ages with my age. Mm -hmm. Write down three words and emotions on how you would feel if that was to happen and then share them with me. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, um, uh, what's the third one? I'm trying to think of a good third word for this feeling. Um, okay. Um, resigned. Resigned. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Can I ask you, like, what do you mean? Yeah, so, like, I resigned as sort of, like, if I have kind of accepted that I kind of gave up. Okay. I'm sort of, like, accepting my fate from that point on, that I'm just sort of going to, my, I'm going to devolve. My, my, my condition is going to get worse. I've just sort of accepted that I might not be able to get better from there. Okay, so resign, but I'm just going to put down in parentheses, given up. Yeah, yeah, give it up. Because I, I never heard it that way before. This is yeah. the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second word. Guilty. But why guilty, though? You're happily quitting on yourself. Why guilty? Oh, I would totally feel guilty. I know myself. <laughs> I'm really good at making myself feel guilty. Um, I would feel guilty. I, I mean, even though I, it was my decision and I said, fuck it. Um, I would feel guilty because I would say it was like, I did this to myself. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would absolutely feel guilty. Yeah. Uh, Let me write, make a note of the third one. What's the third one here? Um, So (laughs) it was hard. Pain. Um, I was going to think like, like ill, basically. Um, I know that my condition, I will probably, I will probably get, rheumatoid arthritis like I have the markers for those things I have the markers for for fibromyalgia I know that those things will start to kick in um I'm gonna put down physical pain yeah physical physical pain okay those things will get worse if I don't stay active and stay on top of them sorry there's a siren going by (laughs) tell them I'm gonna help them as well (laughs) I'm gonna help the whole world (laughs) okay next um let's reverse that exercise let let me ask you this i'm going to put down physical pain okay the reverse exercise of this is okay it's 23rd of march Mm -hmm. so eight weeks will be uh roughly about 23rd of may in 23rd of may you are completing your eight week fitness and confidence workout that is personalized for you it's no one else's business on how you exercise what kind of exercises you get whether you do 10 minute workouts whether you do 30 minute workouts whether your glutes are sore whether your posture is sore it's no one else's we're not talking about others we're talking about we don't care about orange theory fitness at 40 we don't care about any trend we care about how you're supposed to exercise okay Mm -hmm. let's say you complete that Mm -hmm. let's say you also improve the way you eat Uh let's say you also dig deeper and improve certain weak points that have led you to this your whole life in your psychology Mm -hmm. but it's not a perfect fit because you can't fix a person in eight weeks no yeah i wish (laughs) what if you're actually thinking better and you have a different perspective Mm -hmm. now you're more equipped to handle these kind of challenges and set yourself up for life 
mm-hmm. you continue on planning to live and enjoy your life, right? Because yeah. that's yeah. not going to change. Yeah. Let's say you're walking down the street in your favorite jeans and your favorite outfit and you're having a great dinner with your husband at a restaurant and then you guys plan to go away on a tropical trip and you're like, you know what? I, I'm so in shape. I can go right, right now. I don't even have to work out for the trip. Uh, I don't have to plan I, for it. Yeah. I, I, can, I can put on a bathing suit. I don't have to plan it. If you mm-hmm. want to be spontaneous, go to Turks and Caicos right now. Okay. Yeah. How would you feel three words? Okay. Those are easier. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, optimistic. Uh, confident. And proud. Proud? Yeah. Okay, those are easiest. Don't those, are, those are so <laughs> easy. <I'm> no <laughs> those are a lot easier to come up okay. with. Okay. So you know what? Um, it's interesting. Uh, optimistic is sort of the opposite of resign in this context. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'm just going to make an arrow and point to resign. Okay. <laughs> Confident is sort of the opposite of pain, I suppose, I guess, because if you're physically strong and fit and energized, you feel way more confident. So that's an easy one. I'm going to draw an arrow over there. Mm-hmm. And then um, proud is, in this context, the opposite of guilty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what you really want to do right now is you want to avoid feeling resigned guilty and pain and you want to go towards moving uh, feeling more optimistic confident and proud of you so yep that's really what your your vision is yeah so that's a vision exercise that we do okay so you pass the vision exercise okay all right let's move on to um a physical assessment okay all right so let's show you my floor Okay, the first thing I want you to do is keep your arms up. Okay. Okay. Let me angle this the right way. I want to see your hips and your knees. See your full body again. Okay, great view. Okay, so now you're going to do this. And this is what you're going to do, Amanda, okay? Okay. Keep going. Keep going. And stop. Okay. What else do you see that's wrong? You see I mean, I'm not, I'm not going very far down. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's a normal one, but do you see something interesting? Like, where do, where do you think you're leaning? I mean, yeah, I'm leaning to the left. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So, so the reason why I like to do a squat assessment is because the human body speaks volumes, right? So what that really means is your body is telling me exactly what's going on. So, for instance, when you're squatting, your body is shifting to one side. Uh-huh. This is what your body is doing. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And what that really just means in very layman's uh, language and terms is that there are several imbalances going on. That means the right side is the big brother, the left side is the little brother. When the body's squatting down, both brothers are doing the lifting of your own body weight. And then the left brother or the little brother starts getting weaker and weaker due to whatever reason, we'll figure that out. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We'll continue the assessment. And the right brother is saying, hey, let me lift and help you out. And then you go up. Now, why is this a red flag? Okay, This is a red flag because for the rest of your life, if this doesn't get fixed, your left knee, your left lower back, your lumbar, your left hip flexor, which is your hip, your entire left side will be so off balance. And what we want to prevent is when we're 70, 60, even 50, or even 45 year old, we don't want to be one of those people. I'm sure you've seen this on the street somewhere where an older person is walking like this. 
Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. my mom actually walks like this. Mm -hmm. And I have to get her signed up on a program where now the person is coaching her on how to walk like this. It's mm -hmm. still a little off because magic does not happen in eight weeks, right? right. Magic happens over the course of a journey. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. Let me show you something else. Okay. So an, an example of mechanically unintelligence would mean this. Mm -hmm. like this is what you sort of look like. Yeah. Mechanic, mechanically intelligent would be like, let's think like engineers. Let's figure out on how I need to do my upper body strength training. So there's something called a negative push-up where Amanda's going to start with on the mat, mm -hmm. her hands are here, and she's going to do this. Step one, down. Step one, down. Step one. You do those step ones 15 times right now, and I guarantee you, you're going to get a better arm workout than anything else you've done. Okay. Yeah. But it has to be done exactly the way I showed you. We'll give it a shot. Okay. okay. The other thing I'm going to fix for you is keep your hands outside the mat. Just a little bit. Uh, no, bring it back. Here? Right there. Okay. Yeah, and a little bit lower. Chest Here. up, ready. Engage your core and go step one. Down. Step one, down. So we're going to go all the way up to 15. Okay. So the way you fix your squat, because you're going like this, is you actually pick another exercise and then practice that until you get better and earn your way to a squat. Okay. So today, I'm going to show you something called a leaning forward or a modified lunge. You're going to take your body, then you're going to give me a side profile. Then you, you notice how I'm actually leaning forward a bit. Uh -huh. you notice that? And I'm going to take my back leg a little bit. Yep. And then I'm going to engage my core. And maybe I'll adjust. Maybe this might be too straight, maybe here. Then okay. I'm going to slowly lower that left knee to the yoga mat. And then slowly come on. If I want to use uh, support, I'm going to use something like a wall. Okay. And then push it. Because the tension I want to feel is in my glutes my thighs and I want to practice engaging my core at all times. Okay. Can we do that? Yes. Uh, let me see if that could. Should it touch the yoga mat? Just a tiny bit. Okay. And now slow it down for me. Slow it down for me. So that's three. Good. Four. Good. Five, six, seven, let's go to 12, okay? Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, switch. Um, Where do you here, here. Quads and glutes, right? Yeah. What do we talk harder about? on the left side. It was. And, and by the way, your form on the left needs to be fixed a bit more, but that's just, you know, putting the cart before a horse. Let's just yeah. continue <laughs> what's going on in our bodies and our minds first. So here's the thing. Um, that's what I call, let's bring on the genes and the vacation. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you understand like how the science has to be broken down bit by bit and you have to reverse engineer the only thing is you have to have someone guiding you so closely and you're like fix everything because there's so much adjustments to be done in your form right yeah yeah okay and i don't want to get hurt right like if i are starting oh, no, no, no. Don't you know get like, yeah not get injured that is the worst thing you can do right now because it will yeah. only set you back even more and you're going to lose time yeah. so it has to be easy enough in the beginning where it's easy to fit into your busy life Okay, it has to be easy enough where you're, you're collecting small wins. Okay. When you collect small wins, what happens to our psychology? 
I mean, if we, it's better than taking big chunks, right? We, we just let little wins and we celebrate them and it's easier to build Exactly. Up yeah. Our confidence increases when we take on small wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens when we say, I need you to put an hour in right now and then go for the three mile run? By the way, my brain's going to say, whatever, yeah. I'm just going to go back to work and yeah. do the work. <laughs> you know? the thing. Yeah. 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 So that's the thing. And, and maybe in your psychology, maybe no one's taught you how to balance mm -hmm. fitness and exercise. And maybe in your psychology, you're always doing, it's either this way or it's either this way. There is no in between in terms mm -hmm. of working out and staying healthy. There is, it's either this way of eating healthy. Like I can, I can go 30 days without having a cookie or it's, it's, it's either when I have that chocolate chip cookie, I'll have 10 in a row. Yeah. I mean, that's how I am. I think it's either all or nothing. Like yeah. I would do like five Peloton classes in a row, or I would go five weeks without doing anything. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you need to be guided on how to first tap into that mindset first while you're being physically trained versus you just going and working out. Yeah. Because if you continue on the same path, what ends up happening? You continue getting the same results. Yeah. But if you change your approach, what ends up happening? You get different results. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How would you recommend? So, I mean, I, I will have a lot more time than I normally have. I, I under, I want to like be able to celebrate small wins and do these things in a, you know, small digestible chunks, but I also have a lot more time.